Hello everyone, welcome back to my camera blog site, a place where I like to talk about film cameras most of the time, as well as the accessories that go with film cameras, such as light meters and flash and that sort of stuff. So today we're going to talk about a medium format camera, 6x9 format, um, model is a Horseman VH. I think the VH stands for Vertical Horizontal. The film back on this particular camera actually rotates to Vertical or Horizontal. That's my guess anyway. So that's a Horseman 6x9. 6x9 is larger than the Hasselblad format, which is a 6x6. So 6x9 gives you the next step up in negative size, which can improve the resolution of your pictures. Okay, so let's go to the camera, and here we go. So here is the Horseman 6x9 VH camera. Looks like a little black box, doesn't look like anything special. This is the front of the camera, this actually folds down. I'm going to rotate the camera so you can get a 360. So here is the handle, two little... Uh, handle mounts there we also have two handle mounts on the other side just in case you wanted to switch the handle to the other side so from here this is the film back ground glass area focusing area not much on the top here on the top of the camera there's a, an accessory mount and there's a uh, tripod mount accessory screw mount so this is not a hot shoe it's literally just a mount there is no electrical connection here there's no connection between here and the lens for uh, synchronized and flash nothing like that it's strictly an accessory shoe on the back of this there's also another tripod mount same screw mount quarter inch okay so Let's get into this. So to release the front of the camera, you've got two little knobs here. Roll that up. This actually folds down. It comes to a stop. Two bars on the side here. A preset to lock this in place at 90 degrees. Now, you can actually make this bed plate go lower. It has another pre-stop, you push the two in the side, the two bars at the side, and you'll see that the bed there has lowered, I think it's down to 105 degrees from 90 degrees. And if you want to go back to the second preset, you just press the two bars in, and here we go, let me just push that up, and it locks into place. Very straightforward. These two knobs now become the focusing rail for the bellows. When you pull the bellows out, this is a focusing rail. This has two functions, focusing rail, and also it will lock this faceplate into the camera. So when you rotate this out, this middle slide actually comes out. So when you close the camera, let me just pick this up and close it. When you close the camera and then rotate these knobs, that plate that you just saw, that slide, actually moves up into the top of the body and actually holds this in place. So when you open the camera, you are moving that slide back down and this opens up. There you go. Uh, inside here, you see there's two finger tabs, you squeeze those together to bring out the lens board. The lens board will then slide out on these rails. So let's do that. I'm going to rotate this to the side so I can get my fingers in there. Okay, squeeze in, and there we go. Lens board assembly is out, along with the bellows. You can see the bellows. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is attach the lens to the lens board. 
The uh, lens board has a ledge at the bottom and there's a gap behind there. And the lens board will actually go behind that little ledge there, that plate, and then the top of the lens board will clip into here. This is a, uh, right here is quite a strong spring loaded clip that keeps the lens board, lens board in place. So, what type of lens did I, I get for this camera? Well, let me show you. Here it is. So this is a 105 millimeter lens, f5.6. See how compact it is. Maybe two and a quarter, two and a half inches wide. 105 millimeter shutter mechanism, uh, f-stops, everything is all built into this lens, not into the camera. Lens board assembly here. There's a lens board and the rear lens. So to attach this lens board to the lens, this actually screws off. You would get this lens board that has a hole in it to match the lens size. You would slide it over the body and screw this back on. Now, these lenses are sized. This happens to be a Copal Zero. You can go up to number three, I believe. This camera will not take a number three size lens because the rear lens assembly would be too big and would not fit inside here. Now, on this camera, the bellows here are actually quite narrow, maybe not even three inches. So a really large rear lens assembly would not physically fit in there. So you do have to be aware that you get the right lens for this camera. Not any old lens of eBay will fit. Now this lens board is a Horseman lens board and this one is 80 millimeter by 80 millimeter. I like the fact that it's square because then you can put it in in any position. Sometimes these lens boards on other cameras are rectangle. They, they will not fit in any position, one way only. So let's assemble this lens. I like to personally put the shutter release on the bottom so that the other controls on the lens are more accessible. You would ordinarily install a cable release here, but for this little show and tell, I'm not gonna do that. So, right here is that metal plate. I gotta make sure that I fit in the groove behind it. And you do have to be careful that you do get it in the right place so you don't bend anything. And like you see, okay, I gotta move this camera body so I can eyeball it a little better. There you go. I got it in place now. So now you can see the size of this camera. Now, this camera will not close with this lens. I, I can't fold up the camera with the lens mounted. If I wanna fold up the camera, I have to take the lens off. I don't know if you can get a lens that will actually fit on this camera so you can close the camera. I don't know that, but this current setup, I can't do that. If I want to close up the camera, I got to take this lens off. Okay, so focus and rail, two knobs either side. It's a very precise rack and pinion and precision machining, absolutely no backlash whatsoever. It is super super accurate and you can get ultra precise focusing it really is smooth it has the exact um, correct amount of drag it's not loose so it won't fly up and down it is just perfect for me it's perfect so what else can this camera do well this lens assembly lens board can actually tilt forward and tilt back let me show you so here is a Lock screw, you grab it by the top plate. Look at this, see that? Tilt down, tilt up. Basic camera movements, right? Comes in very handy, especially if you're doing some um, close focus stuff. I've used this function myself. Okay, it defaults spring-loaded back to the middle. There's, there's like, a, like an indent, so if you want to put it back to its regular position, it clicks back into place no problem accurately fasten this now 
we can raise this lens board up and down. On my side, in the center, there's a silver lock screw. You just undo that. And on this side is the adjustment mechanism. So let me just spin this around to show you. I just unscrewed that. I'm now grabbing the knob on this side. And look at this. See that? You can rise. You can go down. Isn't that amazing? And with a combination of, of the forward tilt, so you can rise and you can tilt. Look at that. Some good basic camera movements. It can really help you when you're trying to create a scene that you really want to achieve. Now, to put this back in its normal position, so you get it accurate every time, there's two dots there. There's a white dot and a red dot. You just move the control knob here, move it up and down till the dots align, and then just tighten up the thumb screw, lock it in place. Pretty simple. Now, we are not done yet. This focus screen assembly also has an articulating back. Believe it or not, it does. So let me show you. There's four screws, thumb screws, one in each corner, two on each side. You undo those. And then you can, you can grab a hold of this, and look at that. You can pull it out some more. Now, you see the bellows here? It's the same bellows. It's not two bellows. It's all one. You're just seeing the rear part. Now, watch this. And these four rods actually have ball ends on them, so you can articulate this. Watch this. Look at that. So you can tilt the top of the frame in, and then you can actually lock these in place and use that position. You can lock these in place. How cool is that? If you want to change it, you unlock these. So you can go the opposite way if you like. You can go that way. You can go this way. Open here, close here, or you can go the opposite way. Or you can get a combination of, of all of it. it. It really is unique. It's great. Now, there is no fine thumb screw adjustments it's all you know by feel so you have to sort of look through and 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 do it but it is usable it's very usable so let's just put this back to its normal position and it sort of clicks into place it's got some little uh, recesses there it actually clicks right into place tighten these back up to get the camera back to normal how cool is that now the focusing screen, it's the old, similar, not exact, Graflex style back. This camera, once upon a time, would use sheet film, 6x9. And along with that, you would have film holders. Well, you could no longer get 6x9 anymore. So you could make your own if you wanted to, if you get yourself some film holders. These film holders are very similar to 4x5, just smaller. Pretty much identical, just smaller. So ordinarily you would use this camera, you would uh, click up the hood so you could focus. When it's all locked up and set in place, you would then put your film slide in here, like the old Graflex back, pull out the dark slide and take your picture. But you can't do that anymore because they don't make that film anymore. So what's the alternative? Well, Horseman actually, creative in the day, they made a film back for this camera as well. It takes 120 roll film and you can get eight shots on a roll of film, which is handy because using the sheet film, as, as nice as sheet film is, sheet film is you'd have to carry you know, a dozen film holders, that sort of thing. Well, using a roll film, you don't need that anymore. So there is an advantage using roll film. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. Just stretch this out of the way a little bit. Grab the... So here it is. This is a uh, typical film back. It takes 120 film. This one is a six by nine 
the opening is larger. You can get these in three sizes, a 6.7, 6.8 and 6.9. I actually have the, this is a 6.9. And of course the 6.7, I think you get an extra two shots, two frames on a roll of film, if that's your thing. Um, has a dark slide. There's, there's no interlock on this dark slide. We'll get into that a little bit later. This is made by Horseman. It's got their logo on it. Looks very similar to a Mamiya back. Maybe they made a deal. I don't know. But this is actually two parts. There's a film holder and then this adapter plate. This film holder actually separates from this part. And the way you do that, there's a, on the front there, there's a little lock. Slide the lock over. So let's do that. I just clicked it over. Move this here. This now opens up and the film holder comes right out. Here it is. So you'd put your roll of film in there. The paper goes over the front, the black paper. Take it up on the take up spool. And then you start advancing the film until you get the Film marker, you know that long arrow you get on 120 roll film. And uh, you advance the film until you can see. You see there, there's a hole, there's a hole right there. Well, at the back of the uh, black paper is the white paper. And as you advance the film, you would see the arrow. When you can see the arrow, that's when you've got the film advance to the correct position. Once that's in place... You put this back into the film holder and the film holder would then fall into place and then you would actually have to physically lock this. It's not spring loaded. Now when you buy these you need to make sure that something to check. I'm going to just take this out. They, they actually have some foam light sealing material along here. You need to make sure that A, that it's in place and B, that it hasn't gone rotten. I've actually had some um, old Nikon cameras. I, I have a couple of Nikomat cameras and the sealing material actually went gooey. The foam actually starts to like melt. Then you have to really clean it out, scrape it out and replace it. So if you buy extra film backs, just make sure that this material is in place and that the film back is light tight. And another thing is make sure that you put this in carefully so that it goes in the right position. Because if you get it wrong, what will happen is the film back will not close properly. And then what some people do, they force it and you can bend these. You don't want to do that. Just be gentle. It should just fall into place, pick it up, give it a squeeze, slide it over, lock it in place. There it is. Then what you do, once your film's loaded, you've got to continue. You do this about five, six times till it stops. When it stops, you'll see number one appear in the, in the frame window. Then it's ready. Now, after you've taken your shot to advance the film, on every shot, you actually have to hit that button. That, that's a lock release button. You hit that, and then you can advance it onto frame two. It'll take about two strokes. It'll come to another stop, and you'll see the number two in here. So that's pretty straightforward. No batteries, no nothing. Okay, so to use this camera, this is the bit that people might complain. You know, originally... This had uh, uh, sheet film, so you would focus, and then you would uh, get your uh, film holder, slide it in, everything stays in place, slide it in, take a shot, and you could uh, flip it over and take a second shot. Perfect. Now, since you don't have that, you have to physically attach this. So you get your film shot ready, you get it all set up, then you have to physically remove the ground glass screen. And then you have to physically attach the film back. 
So here it is. So you, you hold that on the back. And there's actually two, two black buttons, two slides. They slide left and right. You slide it, it locks it into place. You can actually feel it pull the camera frame, the, the uh, film back into place. Now you can take your shot, take out your dark slide, take your shot. After every shot, I recommend that you should put the dark slide back in because there is no interlock between the film back and the shutter mechanism. So what can happen is you can get distracted, you don't have this in, and then you say, you know, I need to get the camera ready for the next shot. And absentmindedly, you could actually open up the the shutter mechanism, thinking that you're going to focus before you put the focusing screen back on. When you do that, you've just flooded the camera with light and wrecked your picture. So after every shot, it's good practice to slide this back in so you don't screw up. And it's so easy to do, and I'm sure many, many people have done just that. Okay. So when I bought this camera, I actually screwed up. It wasn't the fault of the camera or anybody else. But uh, um, I didn't know that when you buy this, the ground glass that comes with the camera should actually be a combination of ground glass and a Fresnel screen. So when I bought this camera from eBay and set it up on its first day on the tripod and looked through it, the ground glass was so dark, you couldn't see anything. Only outside on a, on a bright day was it useful. I tried to set this up on a portrait shot in, inside a building. Useless. Couldn't see anything. It was so dark. So you really need to make sure that when you buy these, you get the Fresnel screen with the ground glass. So what does it look like? Well, let me show you. Just take this film back off. This is the original, I'll move this out the way here so you can see. This is the original, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit here. This is the original ground glass and hood assembly that I bought. So here it is, here is the hood assembly. It actually looks brand new, the material is not torn, it, it looks almost unused. Maybe it's not used, I don't know. But, but here it is. And there's the surface of the ground glass, right? Now, there it is with the uh, minus the hood. And now look at the front here. You'll see it's, it's a matte finish, got that gray, gray look. It's got the nice grid on there, which is all fine and dandy. But there's no Fresno screen. How, how do I know that? Well, let me show you a ground glass with a Fresnel screen. Are you ready? So, I purchased a, a reflex. Let me just grab this for you one moment. I purchased a reflex viewfinder for this camera. And I'll tell you why in a minute. So, here is the ground glass from the reflex finder. Now when you buy these reflex finders, here it is, let that focus, it should come with this part. Now it is detachable and it's also possible to buy these without the ground glass or the Fresnel. Well let me tell you something, don't buy it if there's no ground glass or Fresnel. So let me show you what it looks like. So. Here is the front of the ground glass. Now, this has got the Fresnel attached. Now, if I turn this to the side, you see there's like a bright spot in the middle, a circular bright spot. That's indicative of a Fresnel screen sandwiched in with this ground glass. Now, if you look at the original one that I purchased, there is no bright spot in the middle. Just a grid and an even matte finish. Going back to the Fresnel screen and ground glass, this doesn't have the grid, but it is a, 
a flat ground glass. And as I move it, you, you can see there's something else in there. And you can also see that bright spot. That's what you look for. So when you're on eBay and they don't show you the other side of the Fresno screen, you look for that spot. If you see that spot, you can pretty much guarantee you got the Fresno screen. Now, this is what the Fresno screen looks like. Look at that. So the best way, if, if you're looking to buy one of these off eBay and the seller has this on the camera, ask him to take it off and then show you both sides so he can open it, he can take a photograph of one side and then tell him to turn it over. And if you don't see a dull side and a super shiny side, it has no Fresno screen. That's where I screwed up. I don't want you to do the same. This camera without the Fresno screen and the ground glass is useless. You won't be able to see anything. It really is that different. Now, I, I bought the reflex finder because I'm an older person. Uh, I now had to start wearing glasses, which is a pain, as many of you people know. Uh, it is just so much easier to use a camera like this with a reflex finder. I have a Wister 4.5 camera and I also bought the reflex finder for that and it improved my focus and accuracy tenfold. It makes that much difference. It's also easier to concentrate on your image. You don't need to use a um, dark cloth and a magnifier. I find that, you know, I, I've done both. It's fine but it is just easier to use this camera with this reflex finder. I'm going to attach the reflex finder to the camera and it's the same process as putting on a film back. You just put it in there, slide these two buttons over and it locks into place. Now, let me zoom out a little bit. So here it is. So the whole thing now with some bellows extension that's probably about 12 14 inches yes it makes it a bit longer but it doesn't add a lot of weight this is made from uh, high quality plastic I can see that this part is metal and if you change uh, from vertical to horizontal on your film back you can actually rotate this no problem so it accommodates that it really does make a difference for me, both on my Wister 4.5 and on this. Without the Fresno screen, you will be very disappointed. Make sure you get the Fresno screen, number one. Great camera. So that was my little show and tell on the Horseman 6x9 VH camera. I hope you like the little insight that I gave. A um, few extra comments. Would I recommend this camera for somebody um, that wants to get into photography? Well, yes and no. If you're a person that really wants to get into the technical side of film photography, then a camera like this will really help you learn. There's things like... Um, bellows factor you know when you extend the bellows of your camera you have to allow compensation on the exposure because of the inverse square law and you can actually look that up um, the nice thing about this type of camera you will learn about the uh, the different lens sizes for these for these type of uh, field cameras what they can do and what they can't do the versatility of a camera like this um, I like I like the fact that on this 6x9 I can use different size lenses I can use it outside without using a uh, dark cloth you probably do need a tripod as it is a view camera type camera 
So it has its advantages and disadvantages. Now, if you want to use this camera in sports photography, absolutely forget it. It's not made for that. This camera is designed for landscape, portraits, studio, you know, that, that, that sort of thing. It is not a sports photographer's camera at all. And I don't recommend that you even try. But if you want to get into, you know, the technical side of film photography, then this camera is a low-cost way to learn all there is to know without spending too much money. On eBay, you can pick these up from, you know, high-end $1,000, $1,500, or, you know, a lot cheaper. Now, if you are looking to buy one of these, don't pick the cheapest. Pick the one that's the best quality that you can afford. Go for quality, you know, the condition of the product. You know, these bellows can get wrecked and damaged and stuff like that. I, I think it's good that you buy a camera where the bellows are in good condition. Make sure that uh, you get the Fresnel screen with the ground glass. Make sure there's no rust on the camera. You know, some of these cameras are located in high humidity countries that might show some rust. Make sure that the camera is clean. That's my recommendation. Now, um, I bought my camera from eBay. I paid a good price because I went on, you know, condition of the camera. But I know that if I want to sell this camera in five years time, I'll likely get all my money back and perhaps a little more. They don't make these cameras anymore. They are extremely well built, high quality, and they'll give you a lot of years of service. So my answer is yes, if you want to get into film photography and learn all the technical side of it, I recommend that you get a camera like this because you will be able to take photographs that you cannot do with digital. I know that for a fact because I do both. Okay, everyone, until I figure out my next camera to do my show and tell, be well.